our service members that go to sea and deploy across the world to protect the people of this great nation. A deed that New Yorkers and Americans, Americans everywhere truly cherish. I can tell you with almost utmost certainty that the service members would not be here today without the strong help and support from their family, friends, and loved ones. It is your strength, love, and determination that make us resilient. Resilient enough to endure the long and difficult and sometimes dangerous days at sea. And it's, and it's you that we return to when our time in uniform comes to a close, passing the watch onto the next generation of warfighter. We recognize you serve this nation every bit as much, if not more, than the loved ones in uniform. And as we understand the countless sacrifices you make on our behalf, and so our senior leaders and our armed forces, we are dedicated to giving you all the support you need to fulfill this vital mission. Now, for those joining us here today who did not know them person, let me tell you a little bit about the men and women who stand before you. These folks hail from across the country, each one with their own distinctive set of experiences and backgrounds. Despite the many differences, making up each one is truly a unique American, but they share some things in common as well. They chose a life of service. They chose a life of sacrifice. They chose a path less than 1% of all fellow Americans have ever traveled. They are the backbone of our fleet. And because of them, we have indisputably the greatest maritime force the world has ever known, hands down, no question. Those service members are our ultimate competitive advantage against the malevolent forces we see today, adversaries who are intent on disrupting the peace and prosperity that our forebears brought so, fought so hard to secure. Their legacy is defined by a long list of sailors, Marines and Coast Guardmen, whose courage, heroism, and sacrifice have held the highest tradition of what our nation stands for and forged the unbreakable bonds of partnership peace and prosperity across the world in defense of the American people and our partners and allies. Being here in New York City, I would like to share the story of one proud New Yorker who contributed to our proud naval heritage. His name is Edward Clyde Benfold. Edward was born in Staten Island in 1931 and was the only child of Edward Benfold, a British citizen who was born in Calcutta, India and Glennis Adams from Buckport, Maine. In 1942, he was 11 years old when his father perished while serving as a merchant marine officer aboard the troop transport ship USS Castilla in the Atlantic, which was torpedoed by a German U-boat. Inspired by his father's service, he served in the Civil Air Patrol before enlisting in the Navy in 1949 at the age of 18. After boot camp at Great Lakes, Illinois, he struck parade as a hospital corpsman and served at naval hospitals in Philadelphia, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and Camp Pendleton, California. And in June 1951, he married a young woman named Dorothy Goff. Then in 1952, a mere two months after the birth of their first son, Edward, H.C. 3 Bidfold was transferred and assigned to serve in the 1st Marine Division Echo Company, supporting Allied operations in North Korea. Later that year in September, just three weeks after he arrived boots on ground, Edward was killed in action while saving the lives of two wounded Marines. He was aiding in a crater at Outpost Bruce during the Battle of Bunker Hill. As he approached the two men to determine their condition and render aid, an enemy soldier threw two grenades in the crater, while two other enemy soldiers charged the position, picking up with a grenade, each in, one in each hand. Benfold leapt out of the crater, hurled himself against the onrushing hostile soldiers, pushing the grenades into their chest, ultimately saving the lives of the Marines at the cost, at the cost of his own. For his conspicuous gallantry, personal valor, resolute spirit, and self-sacrifice, Edward Benfold was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. And so to the talented and highly decorated service members standing before us all this afternoon, you follow in the wake of hospital corpsman third class Edward Benfold. 
and countless others who have contributed to our living legacy of honor, courage, and commitment. We would all do well to measure up to the highest standard they set. In just a few moments, whether you're re-enlisting or promoting, you will renew uh, the oath, an oath that we all swear, and who we, all of us swear, who basically wear the nation's cloth. Personally, I can't think of a more significant symbolic place than right here, Lower Manhattan, at the 9-11 Memorial, to recommit ourselves to service to our great country. You all know the story of what happened here almost 21 years ago. In fact, many of you either joined or chose to continue serving because of the tragedy that occurred here. It was an attack without precedent, perpetrated by violent extremists who thought they could intimidate us enough to shake our resolve and encourage our retreat from the world stage. They were wrong. This memorial exists so that we never forget what happened here of the nearly 3,000 people who perished. Your decision to stand before us on these hollow grounds and once again reaffirm your commitment to your nation stands in the face of what the perpetrators of that attack were trying to achieve. You are sending a clear message that America will not be deterred, will not be bullied, and that not just today, but any day. We are committed and ready to make sure it is well understood that any day is the absolute wrong day to test our resolve. Now a little bit regarding the oath. Throughout our lives, we take a few oaths to our spouse, to our God, and for those who choose to serve in uniform to our Constitution. These oaths are the bedrock of what we stand for as individuals, as families, as citizens, and for this one, as war fighters. I want to bring your attention to the fact that this oath is a little different than the others. It is different because in this oath, you give a public statement of commitment not to a person, not to a country, or a flag, or a political party, but to an idea. An idea codified in the Constitution of the United States of America. Our Constitution is where the idea of America is brought to life. And today you are recommitting yourself to upholding all the ideas and ideals that America stands for. It ensures we remain true to the Constitution's fundamental purposes and guiding principles ratified by the term, we the people. So when you pledge to bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution, you swear to defend the very ideals and beliefs of our nation. This is truly tremendous and powerful. I would submit that this is a prime factor for why we are the greatest military the world has ever known. President Kennedy once said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. So in closing, I want to thank you for your willingness to recommit to your oath and to protect and defend our liberty. Thank you. officers are always in keeping with the long line of naval tradition. For sailors re-enlisting, it is a time for all hands to come together in solidarity with each other to celebrate a sailor or group of sailors or Marines rededicating themselves to the service of their country. In keeping with that tradition, a sailor or Marine must first be discharged from their current enlistment so that they may take a new oath of enlistment. I will now read the discharge certificate. Attention to discharge. This is to certify that you are honorably discharged from the United States military service on this day. This certificate is awarded as a testimony of honest and faithful service. With the ending of one enlistment, Admiral Cottle will now administer the oath of re-enlistment to these sailors and Marines. Therefore, reaffirming the sailors and marines' commitment of service to our country. And with the Navy realists, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear. 
that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulation and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Congratulations. at this time. The officers have a different oath, and I'll go ahead and administer the oath to the second lieutenant, because the second lieutenant is getting promoted today to first lieutenant.
sir. Real estate, promote attention. Left face, fall out. This concludes the 2022 Joint Reenlistment and Promotion Ceremony. Thank you for joining us today. Now, if I could ask you to please direct your attention to the left or the right. The United States Coast Guard Silent Bureau Team will have a performance. Thank you.